Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. I was going through some video comments the other day and I noticed that a few people had started discussing mortality rates, more specifically saying that macaques in the wild on average have shorter lifespans compared to macaques in captivity and so therefore it can't all be bad keeping these monkeys as pets in human environments so I thought about this for a while and I realised this is a really interesting point to delve into further. So guess what? That's exactly what I did. Yeah, so the general consensus at the moment is that stump-tailed macaques can typically live up to 20 to 25 years in the wild whereas in captivity they could well live up to 35 to 40 years and for pigtail macaques in the wild are reported to live up to 20 to 26 years whereas in captivity this figure increases to potentially 30 to 35 years I don't know that the figures may differ slightly depending on where you're looking at it and I'm not going to go through all the different macaque species because the pattern remains the same showing that wild macaques on average do live shorter lives compared to captive macaques and the reason for this of course is largely due to the protection captive macaques receive from things like predation, conflicts within and between social groups, access to veterinary care and stable food sources and so on. So what is my problem then? Why do I keep banging on about the issues that I do on this channel? Surely it's a good thing to keep these wild animals as pets since you can prolong their lives and protect them from these elements. Well, the current lifespan data on these macaques cannot account for all captive environments and up to this point has been heavily dependent on data taken from captive macaques being well, being cared for in, shall we say, in well-managed environments such as sanctuaries and professional rescue centres and so on. Environments where the primary goal has been to provide an adequate level of care for these monkeys. The current figures cannot account for suboptimal conditions such as captive monkeys who we see being exploited on social media, where the primary goal is to use them for entertainment. Now, there are ethical and methodological reasons for this lack of research into these populations, which I will discuss later on in this video. But before I do, I just want to briefly discuss the reasons for why we might see a different pattern of results if researchers were able to capture adequate data on social media pet monkeys. And the first reason relates to the inappropriate foods we often see these monkey owners feeding them on, on these videos. So many owners may lack the knowledge of their species specific dietary needs. For example, they may feed monkeys processed foods, sugary snacks or a diet lacking in the variety that they really need. And this can lead to malnutrition, obesity, and we already know that diabetes is common in pet macaques and other health issues that shorten their lifespan. And to be honest, even when owners do understand the importance of providing appropriate diets for these animals, they often don't care and just feed them whatever looks good for entertainment. And a key lack of vitamins and minerals like vitamin D from exposure to sunlight or calcium can obviously <laughs> lead to issues such as weak bones, dental problems or metabolic bone disease. So proper diet planning including offering a variety of foods is essential to mimic their wild diet and avoid nutritional deficiencies. And another thing, these channels often portray highly sanitised versions of the monkey's life giving us the impression that their monkeys happy and well cared for even when it may be suffering behind the scenes and it's often not until you take the time to learn more about these macaques that you begin to identify the true nature of these pet monkey channels and how they negatively affect the lives of these animals. 
And then there's the issue of premature weaning. So exploited social media monkeys are often taken away from their real mothers at a very young age because younger monkeys tend to draw more attention and engagement online. So, the, But this early separation deprives them of critical maternal care, which is essential for physical and psychological development. And the lack of proper socialisation in their formative months can cause emotional stability, health issues and behavioural problems later in life. This separation itself is a form of emotional trauma that can also have long-lasting effects on the monkey's health. And we know that this trauma can often manifest in a variety of ways, which I've already discussed in other videos. And as much as we don't really want to think of this, but some owners have resorted to some horrific practices, such as chaining, removing teeth to prevent bite, biting, or physical punishment to control the monkey's behaviour. So again, these practices cause physical harm, extreme psychological distress and often lead to lifelong health complications such as infection, chronic pain and so on. And so in these particular captive environments, these monkeys are often forced to endure stressful situations for the sake of creating content. And this includes being dressed up, handled by multiple people or kept in unnatural environments. So this constant stress can lead to weakened immune systems and increased susceptibility to illness. And wild monkeys need their space where they can roam, forage and climb and just be allowed to be monkeys. But those used for social media purposes are often kept in small, confined spaces or enclosures where they can even be seen during some of the filming. And these spaces, they will restrict their movements. And this lack of physical activity can result in muscle atrophy, poor cardiovascular health and joint problems. And how many of those fake vet storylines have we come across where many owners have filmed videos where their monkey's supposedly ill and used fake vets or questionable practices to produce emotional storylines? which only really cause these monkeys more stress. And then there is the issue of them, of many owners not seeking veterinary care when, when the monkey clearly needs it. And I think now this leads nicely into a discussion around the reasons for why there is no reliable data on these particular captive envi environments. So, for example, let's look at the issue of veterinary care for these monkeys first. Because this would no doubt be a problem for researchers if they were trying to track health records from reputable veterinary practices. So many owners who exploit these animals on social media often lack consistent veterinary care. And even when they receive medical attention, records are quite likely to be incomplete or just unavailable. And the absence of reliable health records Further would further complicate efforts to assess the long-term health of these captive macaques and be able to compare it with wild monkeys. So monkeys have unique health needs that general pet owners or even regular veterinarians may not be equipped to handle. So as a result, diseases and injuries may go untreated or improperly treated. However, I should imagine the biggest challenge of all is being able to conduct any research in this population of captive macaques uh, because it just wouldn't be ethical. So research that involves interacting with or just watching these monkeys could also increase their stress levels or exacerbate their poor li living conditions. You know, you don't want to keep these animals in these environments and you definitely don't want to cause them additional suffering. Do you know what, though? Even if you could research this population of captive macaques ethically, it's very doubtful that these owners would cooperate with you anyway. Owners who exploit pet macaques for social media content often have financial or personal incentives to present these animals in a positive light, even if they are being mistreated. To maintain their public image and or avoid legal consequences, 
they, they're likely, well, we know they do hide the true conditions in which the macaques live in. So they may only shoot, fo uh, sorry, share footage or photos that depict the macaques as being happy and healthy while concealing the less favourable realities, shall we say, such as injuries, poor health or behavioural problems. So this selective representation would make it difficult if researchers were to access, were trying to access accurate information about the macaque's well-being. I mean, these animals are often kept in private homes or non-regulated settings, which makes it challenging for researchers to watch them directly or gather reliable information. And we also know that many pet macaques are kept in conditions that violate animal welfare laws or international regulations on wildlife trade. So researchers would face ethical dilemmas about how to handle these situations where they unco uncover such violations. Um, and reporting the owners could lead to further concealment or harm to the animals. In addition, the legality of conducting research on privately owned exotic pets, it would vary by region also, which again would most likely introduce further issues. And I think it would be difficult to collect information about these animals over time because these pet macaques, they're frequently sold or rehomed especially when they grow, especially when they get too big or aggressive for their owners to handle, and particularly when they may stop bringing in the money because viewers often prefer to watch small, cute baby monkeys. So these frequent changes in ownership would probably make it very difficult to track individual monkeys over time and gather longitudinal data on their health. So without this consistent information on these monkeys, I think researchers would struggle to assess their true life expectancies. Okay, so I'll just try and attempt to quickly sum all this up. Although current research figures show that while macaques live on average longer than their captive counterparts, these figures still do not account for captive environments where these complex animals receive inadequate care, such as pet monkeys who are exploited on social media. And I've discussed the different reasons for what, for this as well. I mean, we can see this with our own eyes anyway. And due to the ethical and methodological difficulties, it would be hard to gather adequate and reliable data on this population of macaques anyway. But despite this gap in knowledge, there's still plenty of research showing the negative effects of stress and poor standards of care that lead to physical and psychological health problems that can increase mortality in these monkeys. So if researchers could obtain data on these particular monkeys, then this could well lead to a different pattern of results. So these factors suggest that the true difference in lifespan between wild and captive macaques is probably much narrower than current data suggests. And then, of course, we still have to consider other things relating to human interference when studying wild macaques, especially as these monkeys are forced to move closer into more urbanised areas. But I'm not going to go into this in this video. I know there are many people who enjoy watching these baby monkey channels and you may well have a favourite channel that you think does not exploit their monkey in any way and is an exception. And I get this, I really do, and I don't want to believe this stuff either. So, you know, I would love nothing more than for someone to be able to show me some sufficient evidence suggesting these macaques are not stressed or unhappy in any way behind the scenes. But you know, the very act of keeping these wild, undomesticated animals as pets, and particularly prioritising content creation over their needs, is cruel in itself. 
Okay, well, I apologise because I think I've ranted on slightly longer than usual. So I'm going to leave this video here. But if you have made it this far, thank you for watching.